Okay, I guess we can slowly start. So as you can see, we have a team member from Hamburg here. Can you hear us? Yes, hello. Hello. So basically we have a couple of announcements. Um, and the first one is the following. Uh, you can uh, submit problems uh, that use uh, some other problems you didn't submit yet. For example, uh, if you look uh, at a PDF file, there is a problem 22M. And actually it depends on problem 23 and uh, well, lemma two. But if you didn't yet solve uh, problem 23 or didn't yet prove lemma two, you still can submit uh, problem 22M. Just write explicitly that you're using these two facts and you didn't prove them yet. That, that's okay. So that's our first announcement. The second one. Uh, some of our problems use um, conjecture, some conjectures from calculus. And well, again, for example, uh, well, let's say you have well, it's x axis and y axis, and you have f, which is continuous function. Uh, and you know that at point A, f or f a is uh, less than zero, and at point B, well, f at B, f of B <laughs> is greater than zero. Uh, then there is some point. Well, let's call it C on uh, our line segment from A to B, where f is equals to zero. So you need to connect this point and this point. And somewhere on this line segment, there will be an intersection. So there is a couple conjectures like this, which are used uh, in our solutions and you don't have to prove them. You can just use it as a given. <clears throat> um, yeah, okay. That was the second announcement. Uh, the third one is the following. Uh, please submit your solutions or maybe even ideas of solutions as soon as possible. So it would be easier for everybody. Uh, probably if you have some idea, we can give you some comments on it and it will well, easier way to solve these problems. So please try not to wait until the very deadline. Okay, uh, so these are three like uh, announcement on how things are organized. And now I want to talk a little bit about, well, about how our project is structured so let's see. Okay. Yep. Uh, so as you can see, there is a topological part in our project. And there is, well, let's call it billiard part. So there's a lot of problems about mirrors and billiards. And in topological part, uh, the two main problems are, uh, let's see, 20M and 22M. So these are like the main results. And uh, problem 20M uses lemma one. So you can just look uh, now at a PDF file to get an idea. And uh, lemma one uses problems from 24 to 28, I guess. Yes, Andrei. 
am I right? Uh, and problem 22 uses two lemmas, two and three. Uh, and also problems 23 and problems from 29 to 39. It's a little bit, just a little bit more tricky. And also we have uh, problem 21 about uh, mountain climbers, uh, which I think is uh, just a very great examples. Uh, of why it is sometimes uh, a tricky thing to go from uh, some piecewise linear curves to continuous curves. So I really like that problem. It has, I think it has beautiful solution, especially for, um, for sub problem B. Just in, really enjoyable, but uh, it actually doesn't, uh, help you with uh, the main problems. It's just a beautiful example. And that's it. So you can skip it without um, without any difficulties. Okay. And in part about mirrors and billiards, we have the main result. It's problem forty-two. And uh, well, her younger brother problem 41. Uh, it's like an easier version of problem 42. Oi, sorry, easier. Uh, and the main idea for this problem is idea of uh, transformations, transformations, preserving volume. Uh, and this idea is uh, shown on another examples in problem, let me see, problem 46, of course, and in problem 50. And uh, yet we have two uh, more subsections. It's, it's about outer, okay, let me write it more clear, outer. and interior billiards. Uh, it doesn't have much connection with problem 42M, although it uses some of the same ideas. And uh, one of the main results is problem 51M. So as you can see, both of these parts are quite large, so you I think you should choose just one of them uh, and concentrate all your mental efforts uh, on the chosen part. So uh, can I ask, did, did you already choose something? Uh, yes, uh, we choose billiard part. Oh, great. Yeah, that's very nice. So actually, uh, this problem 42M was solved like recently. I think Andre can tell more precisely. I don't know actually. Yeah, it was solved not so long ago, I guess in, in this century at least. But uh, its solution is accessible for students. So please don't be scared away by my comment. Okay. And actually, um, I wanted to give you some comments uh, on topological part. Uh, but uh, since you chose a uh, billiard part, are you interested in such a comment or I can skip it? Um, I don't know, maybe it is useful for them um, to watch it on YouTube. Yeah, it's a good point. So actually the thing I wanted to say uh, is about uh, Jordan's lemma. So at some point in our topological part, you have to prove, uh, well, 
a very intuitionally understandable uh, conjecture. So if you have a square and two curves connecting at opposite angles, so obviously this is curve number one, and this is curve number two. The thing you have to prove is that these curves intersect. So for example, here is a point of intersection in red. So as you may see, I guess uh, any kindergarten kid will agree that this conjecture is indeed true. Uh, but if you think about it for a little bit, uh, it actually becomes scarier and scarier because, uh, okay, you have some continuous curves in the plane. And well, uh, as uh, Descartes said, uh, this continuous, uh, the points in the plane correspond to pairs of real numbers. And then if you think about real numbers for a little bit, uh, you might lose uh, some of intuitive understanding uh, because, well, for example, uh, the, the definition, the notion of real numbers, uh, I say it's not intuitive at all. So probably I think you have some understanding uh, of uh, what real numbers are, don't you? So usually uh, students say something, it's it's point. Oh, uh, sorry, I was muted. Um, yes, of, uh, of course, I um, know a little bit about uh, real numbers. Yeah, and uh, usually people think of them as points uh, on a line. And I want you to give two different views, uh, which a bit contradictory. Uh, the first one comes from ancient Greeks and it's a famous well paradox paradox uh, and it's about Achilles and as you probably know Choto or tortoise still don't know the difference between in these two words, but anyway, usually it's right, this one. Uh, do you know this paradox? Uh, no, I don't know. This... Oh, that's a cute one. Uh, so let's say we have a race, uh, a competition between Achilles, here is here, uh, and a little tortoise. And uh, Achilles actually wants to run to the tortoise and uh, how to say that, what does he want to do? He, he basically wants to get to the finish line first. And uh, as you may think, it would be definitely possible for an ancient Greek hero to do so, uh, but uh, Ancient Greeks said the following. So let's say there is a distance between them like 100 meters. So to get in front of the tortoise, at first Achilles needs to run these 100 meters. But by this time, tortoise would be a little bit further. And now from this point, Achilles need to follow the tortoise to this point. But when he gets to this point, the tortoise is, a, is again a little bit further and now he needs to run this much to get to the poor animal but now it's again a little bit further and so on so they said you see uh, he can never he can never get to the tortoise because it's an infinite amount of these little segments he needs to run to get to it uh, 
So is the statement of the paradox clear? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, and there's a lot of problems with this paradox. Uh, there's a lot of explanations. Uh, but, well, the main thing I want to underline is that ancient Greeks thought that it is impossible to like cover infinitely many line segments and each line segment has a length. So for example, I don't know, maybe this length. Oh, well not, okay. And so, so it's not possible to run infinitely many segments in uh, like in a finite amount of time. But as we know, the sum of these numbers actually equals to a finite number. Uh, so that's the first like uh, problem with real numbers ancient Greek had. So they thought that it's never possible that infinite sum uh, converges to some finite number. Uh, and another weird view on real numbers. Well, it comes from Leibniz. Okay. So Leibniz, uh, I guess it, it spells like this. Please check. <clears throat> uh, so he wanted to give a definition of a uh, Oh my God, uh, Andre, help, I forgot the word. <laughs> derivative. Thank you, derivative, of course. So sorry. How could I forget? Uh, so he wanted mm -hmm. to give an, uh, a notion of derivative of f, and he said the following. So suppose we have like point x, here's our f. Uh, so let's consider f at x f of x, uh, and then let's take uh, some infinitely small number, epsilon. So, I mean, what is an infinite small number? It, it, it was okay for him to say that there exists some infinitely small number. And then the derivative is, of course, is f of x plus epsilon minus f of x uh, divided by Seven, but still uh, this notion of it an infinitely small number. I mean, what exactly number is it? But he said that, yeah, there is some infinitely small number in a set of real numbers. So here you have like a second, uh, a bit paradoxical view on the real numbers. And so to, um, to deal with these uh, views, mathematicians decided that uh, they assume there is a set of axioms, which I believe to be true, and the rest of math needs to be deduced from this set of axioms. So uh, going back to our Jordan lemma, so it converts to thinking about real numbers uh, and uh, continuous mappings. Uh, and then to uh, real numbers are deduced from rational numbers and rational numbers are deduced from integer numbers and so on. So you need to do some work to actually understand what's going on. So when you start to think about how these like, trivial conjectures are uh, set up, what's, what's beneath the surface, uh, probably you, you might be scared by an amount of hidden uh, notions of hidden theorems you actually need to use to prove such simple fact that two curves in a square connecting opposite angles intersect. But yeah, that was the motivation actually for try to really prove this lemma. Uh, we have a set of problems uh, which uh, drag you to this proof. 
So, yep. Uh, I think that's all I wanted to say. Probably Andre wants to add something. Uh, and uh, and we would like to hear if you have some questions on our problems. Uh, no, I don't have any questions. And how your team is doing? Um, it is okay. We um, we're figuring out about problem number forty-two. I think. Um, yeah, we are um, currently writing them, and we, I think we solved them, but we um, have to write them down so you can correct it. Okay, good. Okay, so Andre, do you have anything else to say? No. So, okay, uh, yeah, if you don't have any questions, then probably we can. Uh, what? <laughs> I forgot the word again. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we can finish. Yes, we can finish. <laughs> and it was nice to hear you. Yeah. Bye.